Hey guys, Quinn Hennick here from Juggernaut Training Systems, Doctor of Physical Therapy. We're going to talk about a very common term that's in the movement and rehab world, and it's referred to as scapular winging. And so observationally, I'll describe this. When you see somebody, you're looking at them from behind, and they're either standing statically or they're moving their arms in some plane of motion, and you can see a shoulder blade that's kind of moving off of the rib cage. And that has been termed scapular winging, as a, the shoulder blade is winging off of the rib cage. Now, this is an actual diagnosis, and it's a neurological injury to the long thoracic nerve, the nerve that innervates a muscle called the serratus anterior, which is responsible, or one of the muscles responsible for adhering the shoulder blade to the rib cage. And so you have this shoulder blade that's concave in nature, and it slides around a convex rib cage, and so you have this nice congruent relationship. When you have an injury to the long thoracic nerve, you have an injury to the serratus anterior, there's, there's less musculature that's adhering that shoulder blade. And so what you get is a shoulder blade that kind of wings all over the place, no matter if you load it or not, because that muscle neuro, uh, neuromuscularly is not functioning properly. And it creates a very instable or unstable base when you're trying to load that shoulder. The problem is most people do not have an injury to the long thoracic nerve. You would know if you had this type of neurological insult. It's usually from a traumatic event. event. So what we see in the clinic, or what I, I get questions a lot, is like, hey, Quinn, I just I happen to check out in the mirror. I have one shoulder blade that looks like it's winging more than the other. What should I do? And my, my response is it may not matter it, because what we're seeing in the literature with healthy individuals, and I, I don't just term healthy as in no pain. I, I refer to healthy in this case as not having a neurological injury to the long thoracic nerve. Scapular winging in this case is not well defined. So, you know, how much wing accounts for scapular wing? What if it's just coming off a little bit? How would I even measure that is the problem. So we, we are having difficult, difficulty even defining this for the healthy population. The assessment is very, very unreliable. And what I mean by that is if I have an athlete standing in front of me, uh, their, their back is to me, I'm looking at their shoulder blade symmetry and congruency. If you get 10 different clinicians or coaches looking at the same athlete, you might get six, seven, eight different opinions on how much winging is going on. Is it a problem? Which side is even dysfunctional? Because what we're seeing in the literature, yeah, that right shoulder blade may be flopping all over the place, but what if it's the left shoulder that has pain? It's almost a coin flip. And so if we can't define the problem and we can't even really assess the problem, then the question is, is it even a problem? And then the second question, probably more importantly, would it even change my treatment or my strength and conditioning program? I'm probably still gonna have people press. I'm still gonna have people do single arm loading strategies of some sort. Uh, the typical you know, I's, Y's, and T's that you have in many, many warm-ups, because what we're seeing is as soon as you load that shoulder blade, it sticks right onto the rib cage. And so it almost cures your scapular winging just from loading because all of those muscles are still intact. And so the fix is just to load. And so we're gonna go over several examples of how to do so because I agree that if I had the choice, I would rather have that shoulder blade adhered to the rib cage. But my argument is it really doesn't matter unless we're supporting load and the load is almost an automatic fix. And so I'm gonna show you what we're talking about. Okay guys, so we're gonna go over some examples of how we would mitigate scapular winging. And remember, it's not, may not actually be a problem, but this is the way that we can load it and make that shoulder blade and rib cage relationship much more congruent. So we'll go over a simple test first. So we'll take a lane that's gonna face away from us and our arms are gonna be outstretched. This is called the Apley scratch test, very, very common physical therapy or, or just orthopedic examination, essentially what she's gonna do is one arm up, one arm down, and we're looking to kind of connect this thing. And so in many circles, what we would define this shoulder blade as is scapular winging, because you can see the shoulder blade actually, the medial border of the shoulder blade actually pops off of the rib cage. And so we don't have that congruent sliding relationship, we have this 
type of relationship. We can see that observationally. Just remember what I said about reliability earlier on. So this is what we're trying to quote unquote fix, right? What I'm gonna have Elaine do is put both fists into the wall. Let's get a little bit closer. And then essentially, she's just gonna actively push into the wall. Now, you can see how we've slightly protracted her shoulder blade. She has a, a healthy long thoracic nerve, her serratus anterior neuromuscularly is still intact. And so you see how this adheres that shoulder blade to the rib cage. I can't, I can't grab onto it the way I could earlier. So she's gonna keep that pressure into the wall and basically repeat the test. And now you can see she's able to reach behind her, albeit maybe not as high, but who, this is plenty high enough for functional activities. And, and look, there's much less for me to grab onto here. You still get a little inferior border wing, but not nearly as much as if she just tries to reach for range and lets that shoulder pop forward, and then you see that. So the idea is just gain leverage, and then boom, scapular wing is quote unquote cured. All we did was cued rib cage position. And she can do that, hold this exact position, because that's a good position, and then just let this arm relax. Boom. So she can actually hold this position, has a congruent relationship with shoulder blade and rib cage, and we didn't stretch, strengthen, cure anything. All we did was cue a position and then relax here. So why does that matter? Well, if I can fix it that easily, maybe it doesn't. And so we'll just go over a bunch of common exercises where we can cue rib cage position in order to have that congruent relationship. So let's go into a, a push up here, Elaine. So essentially recreating exactly what we were doing in standing, pushing into the ground now to adhere that rib cage to the shoulder blade. And then as she descends into her push-up, she can squeeze her shoulder blades together, but that medial border stays fixed to the rib cage and then push away. And what we cue at the top of our push-up is a bit of that protraction because we actually want to teach, it's different than the bench press where you stay locked in and into retraction. The push-up is a teaching tool to get that rib cage to, or get that shoulder blade to slide around the rib cage. And just do a couple reps there. Can't grab onto that medial border, it stays fixed, push away. Very, very good. Okay, so that's an example of how we would cue the push-up. And the push-up alone fixes her shoulder blade to the rib cage because it's loaded. And that's why we say loading can quote unquote cure scapular winging without any extra cues or exercises. Lay on your side, facing away from the camera. We'll also take this into the open chain. And what I mean by that is your hand is free in space because that's usually what, how we use the upper extremities. Our feet are typically fixed to the ground in the closed chain and our arms are free in space. The push-up that we just described is a closed chain activity. But we want to restore this position in the open chain too. So I'm gonna have, I'm just putting Elaine's up, shoulder up to the ceiling here and just let this thing kind of relax and so there's not much tension here. I can actually, if I try, I can actually get under this shoulder blade with my fingers. And so there's not a whole lot of tension. But look what happens as soon as I load here, right? Neuromuscularly, reflexively, she has to stabilize that shoulder blade. And now there's no space to get under. And so just load by itself fixes the shoulder blade like that because her, her nervous system is intact. And so give me, and this is just an example of what we would call a screwdriver where she's just putting her shoulder into internal rotation and external rotation, but the shoulder blade is staying fixed to the rib cage. Something before a warm up for your overhead movements, maybe a snatch, something like that. Somebody who feels a little unstable in their shoulder blade can do an exercise like this and takes care of scapular winging by itself. Take that into a half kneeling position. So we're kind of building the athlete from the ground up. But all of the mechanics are very, very similar. So essentially what we did in standing when she was pushing into the wall, she's gonna do that here. This is a tall kneeling position. Pushing the rib cage away, creating that congruent relationship. I wanna make one point here. Do you guys see this? It's called thoracic kyphosis. This is meaning it's curved. Uh, and this would be lordosis, right, in her lower back. Kyphosis is often demonized as a bad thing, but you need to understand it's actually the normal curve 
of the upper back. And that is so that rib cage or that shoulder blade can slide around that rib cage. So this is completely normal. In this position, we cue to adhere that shoulder blade. So that can then, she keeps tension into the wall. We call this a rib cage locked position. And then look what happens to that shoulder blade it has to reflexively adhere because the load gives it that stimulus. Come back down. Good. And I stay nice and stacked here. And I can't grab that medial border the way I could and then press earlier. Good. And it's not easy, but you can see nice adhered relationship. Come back down. Now reset. So push into the wall with that left arm. Good. Now release the left arm from the wall and hold that position and press. So our quote unquote cure for scapular winging is loading her, come back down, with a variation and then relax, with a variation that reflexively tests her neuro, the neuromuscular control of her shoulder blade. Right? And you notice, I didn't give her a yellow TheraBand to do you know, rotator cuff exercises below 90 degrees. I gave her an unstable load and she has to automatically fire those muscles because everything works. It's just in the position as we're trying to optimize. And we take that just right into standing. So it's the exact same thing as we did before with that test, but now we add load in the same exact way. I like the bottoms up position as a teaching tool initially, because even with a light kettlebell like this, 18 pounds, it gives you that, that stimulus that's very, very difficult to control, teaches stability, whereas an athlete like this is plenty strong enough to produce force. It's simply what positions she's producing the force in. Go, keep going there, and I can't, I can't grab that shoulder blade. It's stuck to the rib cage. Good. Come back down. Reset, rib cage, push into the wall with that left arm. And now lose 10, now, yep, good. And then push. Nice. And relax. So, good job. So that's one example, or several examples, I guess, of how we will cure, quote unquote, scapular winging. If somebody actually has an injury or pain in their shoulder, this goes without saying, you need to go see an actual healthcare professional. You can find one on clinicalathlete.com. They're all screened personally by me. They're gonna understand athletes. But if you don't have an injury to your long thoracic nerve, if you're not necessarily having shoulder pain and you're not injured, and you see your shoulder blade flopping around, don't worry too much about it. It's not a disease. Go through some of these examples of loading progressions and you'll see that that rib cage automatically, that neuromuscular control will be taught. And any of these drills can be incorporated before or in between your warm-up sets for any overhead lifting. Thanks guys.